Peace, peace. This is Ampu Ra with another video on astral travel. Um, this video or this experience pretty much took place August 4th, 2018. Um, I just decided to do change the scenery a little bit, you know, go out into nature. Um, I definitely want to share this experience with y'all. And for those that have been watching, thanks for watching. Um, it's been a crazy weekend. You know, had my brother visit me. You know, me and him really tight. So it's been a, it's been a wild weekend. But this experience happened uh, before he came down. Well, pretty much the day that he came down. Um, so I'm just going to jump right into it. Amazing experience. Uh, so it started out as a dream. And um, usually when I have these experiences, I come out of it through a sleep paralysis uh, stage. But this one, it was more of a, a lucid dreaming. So for those that don't know what lucid dreaming is, you know, I've done videos on it and talked about it a lot. So you've been following me, you know what lucid dreaming is. It's just that you're conscious when you're dreaming, you're fully aware. And in this experience, um, because I was waiting for my brother that day, I would constantly, uh, I kept waking up because he was supposed to arrive to me around eight o'clock in the morning on a Saturday. So I kept, you know, waking up checking my clock it was like five o'clock in the morning I checked again it was six o'clock in the morning and I guess like I said I broke the sleep pattern but I but I didn't go into sleep paralysis state but um, I started out as a dream and within this dream I owned this big house and I remember like trying to fix it like just fixing it up and stuff like that and as I was fixing it I went outside, and when I went outside in the dream, remind you, I'm not conscious. I'm just playing out the dream, like you know, we all do on a daily basis. I wasn't conscious at all, but I remember my dreams. This is why we say, uh, remember your dreams is very important. So as I, um, you know, having this dream, I went outside, and I saw this guy, and we started talking. And he was saying that how, you know, he's from New York and, you know, the next thing you know, it was just a, a lot of people around. So I remember going back into the house. I went back into the house and I remember trying to fix the, this door. And it was a woman that was in the room with me. She, uh, I don't know who she was, but she was in the room with me. I was trying to fix this door and I was in this room with this individual. And come to find out that something was trying to get through the door. And it sounded like a monster. <laughs> it sounded like a monster or some type of animal, right? And it was banging on the door, scratching on the door, making growling noises. And then, of course, you know, automatic, it was, you know, fear. But I remember looking at the window. And I had to be, like, on the second floor within the house. Because the window was open. And I was going to jump out the window. But, you know, just being prepared to what's to come through that door and me questioning uh, what was behind the door is what made me lucid so questioning what the hell is behind this door why is there an animal or some type of monster trying to come in here and because I questioned that I automatically became conscious when I came conscious, I became aware that I was dreaming. And then it was just an overwhelming a feeling that came over me, as always. Um, and for those that have done it, that those has, for those people out there that had dreams and became conscious within their dreams, you understand the feeling what I'm talking about. It's a very overwhelming feeling. And you just, this is very powerful. You just feel so powerful. So that's what happened. Once I realized I was dreaming, I flew out the window because I love to fly. 
<laughs> flew out the window. And I remember seeing three women at the, the floor of the house. I, I flew to one of them, the one that was in the middle. The three attractive women, young, you know, very attractive. And I remember kissing one of them in the lips, just a kiss, like a peck. And she looked at me, and I realized that and the reason why I did it, it was because to see her reaction to, because when I'm having these experiences, I am, I'm, I'm having these experience and trying to analyze it on a scientific level, right? Or experimental level, seeing what I kind of do, seeing certain reactions of individuals that I see in these realms or when I'm having these experiences. So when I did that, I wanted to see her reaction. And then plus when I gave her a peck, it didn't feel like a regular peck as if if I was in a physical realm. So it did feel different. That I I must say. So she smiled and the other two girls that was with her just laughed and I was just like, I right, I'm out of here. Flying. And before I continue, I must say that this experience was by far the it had to be like the longest experience I've ever had. <laughs> as far as a lucid dream. I mean, I feel like I was in this room for many hours. Um, it must have kicked in when I, last time I checked my phone, which was around 6.13 a.m. in the morning on Saturday. Um, so back to the story. I'm flying around. I can't believe it. I can't believe, you know, it's always that same feeling. I can't believe I'm doing this. The whole experience, it's soaking it all in. But I told myself not to get overexcited. I think that was one of my uh, issues that I was having. I would get too excited and then it kind of like loops me into a dream or it sends me back to my body. So therefore, I was uh, totally calm and just, you know, just flowing with the energy and flowing with the experience. Not trying to question things too much or get overexcited about something. So I was just going with the flow like you know, regular, and I started flying, and I, f I felt like I flew in my old neighborhood, right, it looked at, like my old neighborhood in Queens, New York, but it was a little different, and I went down into the street that I was raised on, and I, I end up seeing uh, my cousin of mine's, my young cousin, and I spoke to him, and because I was so conscious in this experience, I was trying to wake him up. So I said, hey, I'm having a lucid dream right now. I'm very conscious right now. You need to wake up. You're having a dream right now. Just to see if, if I'm able to you know, see my cousin in this realm or if is this whole experience is just in my head and am, am I creating all of this so that's how conscious I was and this is my experiment as I was having this experience um, so as I was having this experience I'm, I, I'm trying to wake him up it was no uh, it wasn't you know it, it didn't go well he, he looked at confused like what you talking about I was like, listen, I'm having this lucid dream. You're dreaming. You're, you're in a dream realm with me. You got to try to wake up. I'm trying to wake him up. He didn't believe me. He didn't understand it. So these other kids came that was on the block. And I said, okay, I'm going to prove to you that I'm, I'm having a lucid dream. And he said, how? I said, I can fly. So he starts laughing like it was a joke. And so, so what happens is that I flew back in the air. And his face was amazed so was the other kids that were on the block they were younger kids younger than him they were amazed that i was able to do this so they became like a game and it was like trying to like catch me like tag so you know i would swoop down you know slide down to them and flying around and it was like a game to me it was fun and plus i was also exercising my you know aerodynamic skills when dealing with flying and uh, like I said flying is all mental it's uh it's not easy to do once you in these realms you know it takes work it's all mentally uh, so 
I remember flying away from them, still focused, still conscious, still amazed. So then the scenery changed a little bit. I came across the street and it was looking like a, a marketplace. Tons of people out there. Tons of people. The scenery was like daytime. You know what I'm saying? Which was weird because when I was in my neighborhood and that experience and I spoke to my cousin and the kids and the flying, it was like nighttime. But when I flew to a, a certain particular area, it became like daytime. It was very bright. The sun was shining. <clears throat> Excuse me. And it was like a marketplace. So I flew down. I'm walking amongst the people. Mind you, I'm still conscious. So I said, okay, let me try something else. Let me try to connect with someone. And so happened through a whole crowd of people, there was one individual <clears throat> that stood out. And it was this beautiful woman. She looked at Ethiopian, but she was very tall. Like, not your normal height for a woman. She looked at more like a, like a giant. Let me stop here because it's like a plane flying by. I don't know if it's going to mess up the sound. Just give me one second because it gets real. All right. So this woman stands out. And of course, I'm like, her. Let me target her. So I step to her. I say, hey, how you doing? I said, uh, what's your name? And she was like, why? I said, because I'm having this lucid dream. I'm very conscious right now. And I want to try to connect with someone within this realm. So I could try to find you in the physical realm to see if you actually exist. Or if, if this whole thing is just me creating this on my own. That's how conscious I was. So she was like, kind of like hesitant to tell me, tell me her name. And as we talking, we walking like through this market, and there's tons of people just, just coming by. Um, and she didn't tell me, she didn't want to tell me her name. She was confused. And I was trying to explain to her that you're, if you're not my creation within my mental, then you're another entity within this realm having this experience with me. So I'm going to try to wake you up. And she just didn't get it. She didn't understand it. Um, she looked at me kind of like if I was a weirdo or something. So I asked her. I said, because the experience took me to my old neighborhood in Queens, New York, I, you know, the next question I asked her was, are you from New York? She said, yes. So I said, cool. So as we still walking and talking, trying to get to know her, she stops in front of like this restaurant and she points to it. So I'm like, okay. And it looked like I, I was trying to read the name of it, but it's very difficult to read words or deal with electronics when you're in dreams or with lucid dream or as you're traveling because forms changed all the time. So as I was trying to read the name of this restaurant, it was like the letters was changing, but it says something like steakhouse, something, something steakhouse. But then this, the image of the name started changing. So it was kind of confusing. Like, so, but she's pointing to the symbol that was on the wall of the restaurant. This is when it gets weird. So the symbol of that, that she was pointing to, it was like a symbol of a sword, right? And these three gargoyles, like trying like hugging the sword and they all were sleeping but the gargoyles um looked at like just regular beings and for those that don't know what gargoyles are you know they were created you know in ancient times you know to 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 scare off evil entities and also is when you're dealing with uh architecture um gargoyle is gargoyle is dealing with water so they were used as uh, when when a lot of rain hits the roof it kind of spits the water out the mouth of whatever image it is it could be a lion's head a dragon you know as many different types of gargoyles 
So for those, you know, just a little sum up, like what is a gargoyle? Um, so, but the three gargoyles were like human-like faces, all their eyes was closed, like sleeping. And they were hugging, like they were all hugging the sword. And then on top of it, it was a dragon. And the dragon's mouth was like this. And the dragon was also uh, sleeping. I'm going to try to draw the image of it. Because like I said, I'm, a, I'm also an artist. So I I got a real good look at it. <laughs> you, know, not, you know, I still have the image in my head. So, but the, uh, the image was like, red it was like painted red and I was kind of confused with the image I looked at the image for a pretty long time because I was so conscious I was like I need to remember this image and to find out what it really means so then when I as I was looking at the image I turned to her she started walk the lady started walking away so I'm like hey you forgot to tell me your name so as she's walking away she turns around and when she wants when she wants to tell me her name, like I said, it's like a marketplace. So it's like a bunch of people walking by. And it's like everybody just got louder to the point that I couldn't hear her. Cause she was kind of like distance away from me at this point. I'm like, hey, what is your name? And she's I can see her mouth moving, but I can't hear it. And then she just turned away and it just got lost to the crowd. And it was just crazy. So as I'm still walking through this crowd, I bump into some old friends of mine from high school. So here I am, I see it, people that I don't know, right? I see my cousin, which is in his room. I'm trying to wake him up. I see this, this lady that she just, I knew she was just something else. You know, I knew she was just, I knew she was a powerful entity because her energy and the way she just stood out the crowd, like it was this symbology all over it. Like it was meant for me to communicate with her and for her to take me to this place and show me this symbol. Still, I don't know what the symbol means. If those who's watching this video and if I describe this symbol that you have knowledge of, hey, hit it up, hit me up on a comment and let me know. If you got more uh, information on gargoyles, hit me up. You know, I don't know too much information on gargoyles. Um, so I see uh, like three of my friends from high school. So, you know, it's like, hey, I'm talking to them. Remind you, I'm still conscious. Right. So I'm trying to wake them up as well. Trying to figure this out. They looked at me like if I was crazy. So, again, I said, hey, check this out. I can fly. They were like, you crazy. Right. So it is weird how I was flying through this experience. Like that's another thing I want to state. As I was flying in this experience, usually when I have an actual traveling experience and I'm flying, I'm always flying like Superman. <laughs> right. You know, I'm always flying like Superman. But in this whole experience, I was flying just straight up, just straight up like this the whole time. And this is how I was doing it. And it was, that's something different that I've you know, done in this experience. I'll usually fly like like Superman, hands out and shit. Um, it's crazy. But uh, this one, I was like just straight up face, like on some. If those who watched, uh, you know, those are into comic books or the Marvel. Um, Magneto, when Magneto flew, he was always, you know, faced up. That's how I was flying. So I was showing my friends from high school that I could have this ability. And they too also was surprised and shocked. So everybody that I encountered within this realm when I flew, it was something magnificent to them. It wasn't normal to them. So it felt like I was the only one in this realm that had this ability, which was weird. It's something else I questioned after having this experience. And also, because I flew away from them, just kept on flying, and and as I was flying, I kept rem I kept saying to myself like, "Wow, I'm having this experience for a very long time." So now I'm analyzing that. I'm saying to myself like, "Wow, usually it doesn't last this long." 
So I, I remember saying to myself, like, you know, okay, Ampu, you're doing good. Don't get too overexcited. You're doing the right thing. And I'm just, just having this amazing experience. And it's just, the energy was just so positive. You know, I just felt so powerful. And I remember also saying to myself, like, what do you want to do next? <laughs> like, what, what now? Right? I try to connect with uh, other people, other entities within this realm. And I'm still trying to figure out if it's just my own imagination that I am very lucid in. Or I'm creating this universe. Or I'm creating this whole scenery. Is, this, is it me doing all this? But it's kind of weird because you have to ask yourself, if I'm doing all of this... How can I create so many different individual entities within this experience? You know, it's not like I'm summoning, you know, this experience. Okay, I want a lot of people around me and then they pop up. Or, you know, I want this building to be right here. And, you know, I want to be in a park. Like, I didn't do none of that. I'm just flowing with the experience. So that I'm still questioning. Astral traveling, and like I said, and lucid dreaming is it's the same but different at the same time. So, you know, astral traveling, usually I'm, I'm, I'm in a dream but don't realize it. And then I, I get awakened by the vibration. I separate from my body and everything looks the same. See, with lucid dreaming, I'm already in the dream world realm. So, and then I become aware of what's going on. So, it's a very, it's too... It's two of the same thing, but it's two very different experiences. You know, as you're traveling, I feel like you start from scratch. <laughs> you know, you're like separating, start from scratch, you start at the fourth dimension, then you move up to other dimensions, and things can get tricky. But lucid dreaming, it's like a little head start. It's like a little boost. You're already in the realm. You already get a head start, you know. And I've had lucid dreams that I started out in a scenery I have no knowledge of. And that's what it was with this one. I was in a dream in a house that, you know, it's not my house. It was a totally different house. It looked like a mansion. That's how big this, it was a huge house. I don't own the mansion. <laughs> I don't got that kind of kind of income. Um, so, you know, also just thinking, wow, how am I doing this for so long is what I kept playing in my head. And I remember flying and just thinking whoever is helping me with this experience thinking whoever created this experience just the whole positive energy of the whole creation of this program because that's what life is right physical realm is nothing but a program that's all it is we are all like actors and actresses in the playing out a movie and it's the same thing when you enter higher realms it's like you're entering another program but just that another you just like it's like a video game you move up a level but then like the, your abilities change the rules change but i'm still conscious and i understand that this is also a program i, I this is i feel it it's like a it's like you're in a computer which is weird because when I saw the letters on that building and how they were changing, they were like changing right before my eyes, like um, the matrix, how they see, that you see the letters and numbers coming down and they changing. That's the effect that it had. That's what I saw. That was the experience that I saw. So it was hard for me to really read what the store was. So me being conscious, I'm saying, hey, what if this restaurant really exists? Let me look at it. Let me research it. Maybe that actual symbol is on this building. So this was out. This was my whole thing in this experience. It was trying to connect the physical realm and the spiritual realm, and see if there was any connection there. To see if I could connect one thing to another and say, "Hey, this is proof that this is really going on. This is really extra concrete proof that you know this shit is real." Um, because, you know, like I, like I said before, I'm, I, like I've been studying new things. I've been studying hypnosis. And in hypno, I read this book years ago on hypnosis. And it's basically this lady was trying to heal people. So she will put you through 
a hypnosis state and you would tap into your past lives and she was curious to you know as this person in the hypnosis state they would say their full name they would say where they lived what address what it was and everything how many kids they had if they were married or not so she would actually take this information and write it down and look to see if this person actually existed in this particular time period and so happens was it really did so and it was not just one it was many cases that that's what she was doing she would have somebody go through a hypnosis state they would tap into their past lives one of them had throat problems right this is one of the issues that I uh, remember one of the issues the lady had throat problems and I think she had like cancer in her throat something like that to that effect and she wanted to know what was causing it so when she put it through the hypnosis she tapped into her past life when her, one of her past lives in fact, was around the 1800s so what happens that in her past life she she died from choking on a fruit a piece of fruit <laughs> and so it happens that it carried on to her other lives and she had problems with her throat so that she took the name of the individual where they lived how many kids they had and when she researched it it all came back accurate so that's what i was trying to do with dealing with astral traveling and lucid dreaming i was trying to see you know if I can connect with this individual in this physical realm. So if she would have, if I could really hear her name, if she would have told me her full name and me remembering her physical appearance, the image that she took, the place that she lived, I was going to try to feed off of that, but it didn't work out. Um, so it's like I said, this information is ill, it's real, and it's deep. So I'm still studying it still studying my abilities and um, it's just real um, life is a game it's all a game that's all it is you just have to understand it the more you understand it the more you be aware into what's really going on or what's what's your, your true purpose why you're here you know a lot of people live day to day and they work nine to five and they never really question why are you here <laughs> How did you really get here? Not dealing with the sexual intercourse and the, on a physical level, but on a spiritual level. How did you get here spiritually? And these are questions I always ask. Another thing too, the to, to get back on to that um, this lady, I forgot the author's name, but on a hypnosis tip, a one individual had a big birthmark on his leg big birthmark and always wondered what the birthmark was so when she put him through hypnosis come to find out in his past life he was a Native American and he got shot by an arrow right in that particular spot and how she knew that he because the thing is she didn't know he had a birthmark there she was tapping into his past life and in his past life he was telling her that he's a Native American, he's explaining the scenery, she's jotting all this information down, and he's saying that he died from an injury of an arrow in his leg. So when he came out the hypnosis, she asked him, hey, do you have a birthmark on your left thigh? And she, he was like, how do you know? He says, yes, I have a big birthmark on my thigh. So that was another study that she was figuring out as far as dealing with birthmarks. And birthmarks, in this book, this is what she was explaining, birthmarks tap into uh, injuries of your past life. You know, one person had one on the arm, and like, you know, in his past life, the person got stabbed. So this is why you have birthmark. I have two birthmarks. <laughs> one of the birthmarks, you know, that I have is here covered up with you know my tattoo but right here on my shoulder I had a I have a birthmark and it's a it's a perfect circle <laughs> like a sun disc and as I was young I always hated it you know I always hated this birthmark not knowing I was young no knowledge of it not knowing you know what the what birthmarks means and I covered it up with the first time I got a tattoo, it's the only tattoo I had, so I covered it up. 
but it's an actual circle on my arm, on my left shoulder. Perfect circle, perfect circle. So I don't know what happened in my past life that gave me, you know, this mark that carried on to my next life. So something to think about, right? So whatever happens in this lifetime, it's going to reflect your next life because life is a school, you know. You move, you, you know, your, your body decays, you move on, you jump into another body. You know, this is what I, I would, I'd be explaining that we, the level that we are on in this physical realm, we, are, we got a lot of catching up to do because people are still fighting over racism and sexism. And like I said, these are just biological uh, machines that we are operating that have this experience. So, you know, to relate to what this lady was saying in her, her hypnosis book, person past life he was a native american and, you know in this life he was a caucasian so you know we we, we, we fighting over things that are just petty and we don't really have no knowledge of and that's the thing things that you don't have knowledge of you automatically fear <clears throat> you just misunderstand to what's really going on you could have came back as a female you could have came back as an asian person could have came back as an african-american it came back in aborigines who knows it's no many it's not telling how many times you know how many bodies you occupied in just to come to this realm to have this experience now you probably pretty sure went to other realms and other earth-like planets or other universes or other galaxies to have certain experiences you know i'm reading this other book that she uh i forgot the name of her book but i'm reading this now and she's tapping to this guy that she put him through hypnosis and he's explaining how he lived in an alien planet. <laughs> so he's literally describing the whole planet, what his agenda is. He's explaining to how in this in his planet that he was from, um, there's no war, it's all peace. And he goes in detail as far as reproduction, details on his physical appearance his job, the scenery, most of the architecture uh, structure is like a metallic metal. And she's detailing like what kind of metal. He's like, it's not from this type of planet. It's a metal that's, you know, from a different galaxy. It's hard to explain. So, you know, me researching hypnosis, you know, me tapping into actual traveling experiences, past lives, you know, your future lives, because you have to understand how time works. Past, present, and future all consist at the same time. So your future is already existing. Your future self is already existing. Your past self is already existing. And your present self is existing all at the same time. <laughs> it's kind of deep, right? But it's real. It's really real. So, uh, yeah, like so like I said, so when I came out this experience and like I said, it happened August 4th, 2018. This will be number 41. So I've had this type of astral travel lucid experience 41 times that's documented from 2012. It's real. And so as soon as I came out the experience, it was uh, like I said the last time. I, the last time I remember checking my phone was six. It was like six, six oh seven, six thirteen. When I came out the experience, oh, let me get back to how I came out the experience. I, I'm tell you, I got sidetracked to a whole types of information. As I was flying and having this long experience and thinking, whoever is helping me gain this experience very overwhelming feeling came over me and then what happened I got too excited and when I got too excited I remember sitting on this roof of this building and just looking down at the landscape and just amazed so and I remember getting this very overwhelming feeling and I got too overexcited and then when I did that I ended back in my physical body so when I came out of the the first thing I did was grab my phone. I grabbed my phone, 
and I just started typing away. Um, as you can see, the whole experience, I just started typing away because I didn't want to forget. I mean, even now, I'm telling you what happened to what in this experience, and I didn't even look at my phone to read it. I still remember it. It's still so fresh to me. And today is August 6th, so this is pretty much two days ago. So the experience is still fresh to me. But, you know, as I start thinking about it, more details start to come. The more I keep playing out the situation, more details start to come back to me. So uh, I'm going to leave on that note. Uh, for those that have been watching my videos, I want to say thank you. Uh, it's been a very, uh, very amazing experience. These past uh, actual traveling experiences have been really good. And like I said, I've had bad ones. And so far, I've been having really good ones. And it's due to mastering the fear. Not getting too overexcited. And just play it out. You know. So I'm going to leave on this note. Uh, continue to look out for these videos. And just follow me on my journey. And like I said, we learn together. And like I said before, I am no, I'm not more special than you. You have the same ability when you dream every night you're an actual traveler your physical body is there and your spiritual body leaves and journeys you do it every day the, the thing is you have to exercise your mental to remember you have to remember and once you remember the game gets real, and uh, I really want to start like a, a actual traveling community. You know, just get a group of people that have these experiences multiple times, like myself, and just connect with them, and just share stories with each other, and just compare them with each other, and never know. Let's see if we could connect on this room and meet up somewhere. Right? That would be pretty dope. It's like that, um, another movie to good to watch, uh, Sense8, it's on Netflix. It's about a group of people around the whole world that don't know each other, but they connect with each other through telekinesis. So look out look out for that, uh, that uh, movie. It's on Netflix. It's called Sense8. Uh, but don't watch it around with kids because it's a lot of sexual things that go on, on that. I'm just warning you now, but it's really deep and it taps into... The information what I'm talking about so the information is out there man people know about this especially in Hollywood I keep saying but let me not keep talking because the gods <laughs> mother nature is talking she said I right, am pool that's enough we gave them enough information let them let them let them marinate on that so like I said this is number 41 this is ampu Rob with another video on astral travel. Hotel.